Hey guys, Ray from Love VRV. Today I'm going to install and test out a new solar charge controller. Now this one here is a 40 amp. It's an MPPT type solar controller and it's from a company called SRNE. Now early this summer I installed one of their products. Uh, it, was, it was sent out to me by a company called Bouge RV but actually SRNE is the company that makes them. They're sold under a number of different brands actually. They get labeled of different brands but this is actually the company that makes them. So they contacted me a few weeks ago and offered to send out a different model. I guess they saw that other review and wanted me to uh, install and review a different model for them. So this is the one. This is an ML2440. 40 stands for 40 amps. It's a little different than the other one I have. The other one I have is a, is a little bit smaller and has an external display. Uh, this one, the display is all built into the actual package. Now, I was really interested in doing this because uh, my system has evolved to the point where I've split my uh, solar panel arrays into two separate arrays. I have basically two pretty close to 500 watt arrays on the roof, so I'm using two solar controllers independently of each other. They're charging the same battery bank. But right now I have the MPPT controller that I installed in the summer, but I'm going to install another one and then remove my old Bogart Engineering PWM controller so that I'll have matching the same brand of controllers. Also, I like to review these uh, controllers because they're more economical to buy than the standard you see out there. Everybody's putting in Victrons and reviewing them, so it's kind of nice to install and review some other different brand than everybody else is doing. Uh, in this package you get this wire here is temperature compensation wire plugs into the controller and you put it near your batteries if you have lead acid and it will adjust the charging algorithms to for best performance at different temperatures especially in cold temperatures you need to charge at a higher voltage. I personally won't need this because I'm running lithium batteries so I'll be setting this up for my lithium bank it has some preset uh, things for uh, lead acid and gel and uh, AGM sealed batteries, but it also has user customizable settings so I can set it up exactly to what I want to charge my lithium at. A little so uh, owner's manual there. Also get this template for uh, setting it up, drilling holes and putting screws in because this one kind of has the mounting on the back hidden there so you actually put your screws in and then you just hang it up I'll be hanging it in my storage compartment on the back here we have all our inputs and outputs there's the temperature compensation here's PV photovoltaic panels so that can go in there um, I run a 12 volt system so I can go up to I think 520 watts with this controller um, if you have a 24 volt system, you can go up to 1,040 watts. Here's where it goes out to the batteries to charge them. And then this one also has uh, a load function. I guess you can run a load off it and set timers and set the load to come on and off. Uh, one use case people have is they, uh, at night if they want a light to come on, they can program this thing to uh, when the solar panels don't see light anymore this can turn on and run a run a light for them and then this RS232 output is for data and you can get a dongle and make us have a smartphone app or probably plug a computer into that just before I install it I thought I'd give you guys a peek inside now I don't recommend doing this um, but it was pretty easy just four screws and the front plastic cover comes off and they're just the one plug with the LED readouts done do. So overall it looks pretty good. It's all mounted on a, a heavy duty uh, slab of aluminum heat sink here. All the transistors and FETs and stuff are mounted underneath onto the heat sink. There's your connecting ports. Looks like you could probably squeeze a, a six gauge wire into those. I like that the board has all been conformal coated. 
which is nice. And capacitors look pretty good. They're 105 degrees Celsius capacitors. This is kind of cool how they've mounted these co coils up here. Put them into some epoxy and mounted them right onto the heat sink. There's your display and your controller buttons. So overall the build quality doesn't look too bad on it. Let's hook her up. Okay, so I've cleared a spot in my boondocking power system area here. This is in my front storage compartment where my batteries live. Um, you can see the other controller up there. And this is where I had the, the second controller before. Kind of to rearrange a few things to make some space. But I think I got a nice, a nice amount of space there for it. They say you want four inches below and four inches above just for cooling. And they give you this cardboard template so you can get the screw holes all perfect. Because the thing goes in there and, and uh, basically hangs on the screws. So we got that all set up. Mount that on there and then I can hook up my wiring and explain it to you. Okay, all fired up and working. Let's go through the display here and explain what's going on. See on the display they have the solar panel, graphic, battery, and load. And then this is the voltage, current battery voltage right now. Um, 12 volt over there, I'm in 12 volt mode. It also can do 24 volt. And then it says MPPT right there. Um, so you can see the, it's kind of dotted lines going. That means solar current is going in right now, but there's nothing on the load. I don't have a load on it so like I say um, people use that for running lights at night and certain things like that you can set it up to come on at certain hours but I don't use the load so you know, won't be using that at all so I just have four wires connected here we've got positive and negative coming from my solar panel array and then we have positive and negative going to the battery um, setting it up is pretty easy you can first up and down you can scroll through the different readouts this is the main page here there is the voltage coming off of my uh, solar panels right now 18.2 and then this is the actual solar current coming in and you can see it's quite low I'm actually under trees right now and it's really cloudy when I'm doing this and then that is my battery voltage, 13.3 volts. That would be the amperage going into your load if it was hooked up. And then this is the amp hours coming coming from the solar. I guess it, it, it tells you how many, amp, you can figure out how many amp hours you're using in a day or bringing in in a day and then amp hours into the load. And this is the temperature. Um, I don't have the temperature. Um, sensor hooked up it's it's more for lead acid batteries you don't use it for for a lithium battery so it just sits there just showing 17 celsius and then load is zero because i have it turned off and then this is an error code if anything goes wrong it'll spit out an error code like an e and then some number and you can look in the manual to see what's going wrong with the unit and there we go so then to get into the settings to set everything up, you can see over here, it's hard to see, but that says LI as far as battery. So I have it set to the pre-programmed lithium battery mode that this thing uses. But you just hold that and then you can get into here and you can see there's lithium. Press it again, there's 12 volts. So you can change what you want to do here. If I wanted to use a different battery, there's a flooded, there's sealed less lead acid, and then there's actually a user setting. And when you go into the user setting, you can custom set all the different uh, charging profiles um, as far as float and absorption, uh, bulk mode, all that sort of thing, equalization voltages, which, which it's kind of cool that you can go in and custom set that just in case you want to play with with your charging profiles away from what this thing has as far as its uh, as it, its ready-made system. Just put this back on lithium over here. There we go. And then to, to save your settings, you just hold the, the button again. There we go. 
And then up here, let's just scan up a bit. You can see these lights. And that's the, the different uh, uh, indicator lights. That's showing that the solar panel is working and charging right now in an MPPT mode. There's the battery showing it's on. If a load was on, that light would light up. And then if something was wrong, there's a caution symbol here, and that would light up, meaning there's a warning to look at and check your error code. So as far as the wiring, there is some indicators here of fusing or switching. I'll just show you what I've done in my particular case, but it's always good to uh, fuse each of your, your wires in your system to prevent any any problems if something shorts then the, the wire won't overheat and cause issues. So for the wiring to my battery there's the negative black wire. I just have it going straight down here to the the frame of the RV and it'll return to my battery bank through a frame return. Uh, this red wire is going to my battery. It's going up here and it's going into a breaker, a 40 amp breaker. So that way I can turn things on and off and if there's an issue there's a 40 amp protection device and then it goes down into my battery system. As far as the solar, there's negative and positive go up here and then they go up. Uh, there's two wires that go up to the roof and then um, they split into my panels up there. Now I have them in parallel wiring and each panel has been fused and I also internally I have some disconnect switches I have them actually mounted in my bathroom wall just to make it easy for me to disconnect my solar and then I also have bus bars here because I have another panel that I use as a ground panel also it, it rides in the truck um, on the back of one of my toolboxes so that's just paralleling it together with the roof panels that's what those those uh, bus bars are about so they come down and feed into that so everything is protected um, when you first turn this on they want you to turn the battery on first and the thing will light up and it'll show battery and then you turn your uh, panels on so there's the four 100 watt panels on the roof and like I say, I have another 100 watt panel I use on the truck and also I can disconnect it and use it as a ground panel. So in total, 500 watts is going into that controller. So there we go, two 40 amp controllers and uh, 1,040 watts of solar. So this one will have 500 watts going into it and this will have 540 watts going into it. But they're completely separate systems and then they charge the same battery bank. Um, can't really give you too much of a demo today. It's uh, on the Oregon coast here and we're getting just basically white sky under some trees so next sunny day I'll come back and, and give you a look. Let's just see what we're getting right now. 1.86 amps and on this one 1.65 amps so not too much, <laughs> just over about three and a half amps. Stay tuned. Okay, after many days of rain, we give a little bit of sun. It's still filtered by some of the fog coming off the ocean, but not too bad. Still, this angle's pretty low. We're into uh, mid-November now. Well, let's take a look at what it's doing anyway. So, we're pulling in almost 15 amps which isn't too bad given the, the low sun angle and the hazy sky. That's about the best I'm going to be able to do while we're on the coast here. I'll have an update on this system once we get down into the desert and uh, maybe we get some better sun so we can see what the, the maximum input will be with it. Well there you go it seems to be a decent enough con controller um, I'll leave a link to the actual SRNE website and the page for this controller, ML2440. Uh, you can, if you want, you can take a deep dive into all the product specs and stuff like that. Um, like I say, I see this controller all over the place on the web, and even sometimes it's branded as a different brand, but uh, basically the same looking uh, controller. 
Uh, the price can vary anywhere from about 120 bucks up to 180 from what I've seen. So uh, fairly economical type controller. I'm going to keep using it. Uh, we're just headed down to the desert. going to be at least three or four months of uh, solid boondocking. So I'm going to use the system with their two different controllers. And I'll come back with an updated video on how they perform for me. Till next time, Ray from Love RV. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.